Well, that leads me to, to the next thing I want to talk about, because I always love to ask. I love talking to guides and asking them, like, what is give me your like the worst situation you've ever been in with mm. a client. Worst situation I've ever been. Obviously, in. you don't have to give names or anything. Just like the worst client you've ever dealt with, like the the horror stories, yeah. you know. Um, dude, I'll give like I'll, that day you were like, you know what, this sucks. I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, dude. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, I've got a good, I've got a good story, and you know, um, they it actually turned out great. And in the end, I'll start with the ending. The guy in the end, like weeks later, you know, he he messaged me. He's like, Cliff, I just went. You know, he was just like, it was an awesome hunt. I know I was a shithead, you know what I mean? Like, and he, and he had some extenuating circumstances why it was. So it was all good. But at the time, I couldn't believe it because it was a hunt where a bunch of uncontrollable stuff happened. It was a guided elk hunt, took the guys in, father, um, he brought his two sons, adult sons. They were like in their 40s probably. Good guys, but for sure, the father had always wanted to do a wilderness horseback hunt, and he was bringing those kids he was forcing those kids to come come along. They were hunters, but this was not like in their deal. Yeah, not, not, you know, not prepped or whatever. But they're going to do it for dad because this is like his dream. He was probably like in his mid sixties, and or maybe even older than that. But we get in there, and then um, the the craziest thing. So they they got I um, they killed one smaller bull, and then they killed what was probably the biggest bull we ever killed in the flat tops. Probably like something like. 355 360 something like that you know an over the counter unit and but the bull had a broken beam had a had a broken uh one side was broken off and uh you know up fairly high but he's a huge bull like great you know awesome right and anyways he got i wasn't with him when they went to go pack the bull out but he got in a fight with one of my guides about packing the the hideout and it was in like a really shitty spot you know what i mean and he wanted he wanted the way I understand it, stand it is he wanted to come out, like he, they wanted to come out with the bull and then they wanted to get off the mountain like that day. And the guide was like, dude, I can't pack a, a whole hide out of a bull unless you guys are going to pack some. So big deal. They got back to camp. He was pissed because the hide hadn't come out. I was like, well, we can get it, whatever. Why didn't he carry it then? Well, yeah, he just did. He's too big for it. I mean, uh, you know, he couldn't. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they couldn't do it. They wanted the guides to do it. The guides were like, we can't do it. We got... We got meat. We got everything else. It's like a two-day deal if you want the hide, given where it's at. So this went down as like, well, we can't control that. So he was pissed about that. And then the next day we had a wildfire in, underneath the camp. And so I, it was crazy because I went up, Derek, and the fire was moving up the mountain. So the fire started when I was in camp, packing the gear out, and we were packing them out of the camp. And so I vividly remember... The, like being in the camp, the camp's at like 10,000 feet and there's snowy mud in the camp. And one of my guides who had left early, he went, he goes down, he was, you know, well, when I rolled into camp, they're like, hey, can we, can we go out early? We'll hike. We don't need to ride. And I told my guides like, yeah, dude, I got it. We'll get the, we'll get the, the bull and the hunters out and everything else. And uh, anyway, so my guides started just hiking out of there. It's like four or five mile hike, but it's downhill. And uh, one of them comes back in there as I have, I have the bull's head on the top of a mule, and one of my guides comes up the mountain like 30, 40 minutes later, and he, he's like so exhausted he can't talk, and he starts like spewing, you know, like he's almost like nonverbal, but I make out fire, and I'm like, I don't know what he's talking about because I'm standing in snow. There's no fucking way there's a fire. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's there's no way. And uh, so What fire, time of year is this? It's like October. Oh, their yeah. first rifle season. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's a big, you know, a big sagebrush, oak brush bull goes up into this, you know, aspen conifer uh, transition stuff where the camp was. Anyway, so I'm like, I got to see what he's talking about. And I walk out over the trail we came in on, and there's just like, I swear the flames were 100 foot tall already, Jeez. like rolling up the mountain. And so I like got back into camp, and I was like, guys, like we're getting out of here now because I, because that was the trail in, and I knew I had to go out the other direction so we had to go up and down and around to get out so i got all the hunters in dude while we're getting the hunter like i literally grabbed the bull and i just threw it on the ground i had like half the meat packed i threw it on the ground like all the shit that was in panniers all the hunters gear i was like dude because by then like i could 
like visibility is like 15 feet. Yeah. You know what I mean? And in and the, this hunter is like, well, we got to get our gear out. I'm like, brother, we ain't getting your fucking gear out. Like we have to survive. Get your life out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And so literally he's trying to have an, like an argument with me at this point about it, which if like, I feel like I'm a pretty like even kill guy, but I was like, this is, we ain't, we're not having this argument, dude. Yeah. So anyways, we, we get them on, we ride out of there, go out, you know, go out, you do a three hour detour. And then we're coming underneath where the fire was. And I'm thinking to myself, like, I wonder, I don't see the smoke. You know what I mean? I wonder if it, if it got, you know, if it went out or something. And I thought to myself, maybe I'll go up there and try to get his gear. You know what I mean? Maybe I can get back in there. And I remember me and another guy, we, we go up these switchbacks and literally there's like a little bench right there. We roll up on this bench and a helicopter is right there, like at eye level with a, you know, like just had dumped a bucket and I can see the pilot and I can like, I swear it's, I'm, I, I'm not making this up, dude. I can see the guy's look and the guy's look is like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what are you like? Get out of here. You know what I mean? He's probably like about 150 yards from me. So I turn around like the gear's not coming out and that guy. So they were stuck at our place for a couple of days and just, it was just a, like a bitch fest the whole time about getting the gear out. It's like, I can't get the gear out, yeah. you know? So it's just an example. He's of, lucky to be alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Been... Yeah, exactly. It's just a dramatic thing. And then he, be, the you know, honestly, the hardest part about the whole deal, not the fire deal, like stuff happens. I can understand somebody being upset in the moment. All of that being said, the thing that I guess I took most personal about the whole deal, Derek, is he was upset about the bull having a broken beam. And it made me kind of snap on him. Probably the only time I ever snapped in the in the business. Because I'm like, dude, who cares? You could pay $200 or whatever it is and get a new beam. You know what I mean? So it was Yeah, that the dynamic. taxidermist can fix that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Not who a big, cares? Yeah. No big deal. Like, it's a glorious over-the-counter bull elk. And you haven't... And let's be honest. So did he break the beam after he got killed? No, no, it was broke. Oh, it was already yeah, it was broke, broke from fighting? Yeah. yeah. Broke when they killed it, but... But anyways, that's one of those stories, I guess, like depicts a situation where I, yeah, it was like the worst, worst client. Yeah. All that other stuff, all the other shit, like the, you know, the, the gear and all this stuff that that's on whatever. Yeah. And you know, people can get frustrated can in the get, moment. Like, can I get my be stuff? pissed off about a fucking broken beam on yeah, a yeah, yeah. bowl? Like, come on, dude. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, it's funny cause I have a guy, a buddy, he was telling me a, it, very similar to, the, yeah. to that. And it was, he was like, I got to kill a, a bull that's, you know, a hundred and I got to kill a, or a, uh, a deer. It was a mule deer. He's like, I got to kill a mule deer that's over 186 inches or something like yeah, that. Yeah, some target thing. He's yeah. like, why? You know, he's like, <laughs> okay, but well, I mean, we'll try. I'm not going to get That's all you can do. Yeah. All you can do is try. I'll try to find you a big deer. And, sure. you know, if you want to shoot him, you could shoot him, you know? And yeah. he's just like, all right. He's like, uh, what do you think that, you know, he finds one. He finds one. He's like, that's like 100, that's at least 185 inch deer, probably yeah. pushing 190. Yeah. You know, he's somewhere in there. And he goes, all right, should I shoot him? And he's like, well, I mean, it's up to you, man. Like, yeah, sure. It's your so call. he shoots the deer, uh, shoots it with a rifle. They get up to it, and he, immediately the guy is like, where's the tape? Asking for tape yeah, so he yeah, can yeah, measure yeah. this deer. I'm like, dude, I'm thinking, like, really? He's going to pull the tape out before he even, like, yeah. puts his hands on the deer? Like, he's just going to. That's the only and thing And he says matters. he tapes it out, and it was 180 80, he needed one. He needed one eighty seven. Yeah, and I guess it was because he had a bet with his buddy. Okay, and his buddy had killed like a one eighty one eighty seven. Yeah, so he had to beat that one eighty seven. Did that deer measured one one eighty six and five eighths or something like that? Yeah, and and it he ruined said, it for him. And he said he he said the guy like got fucking pissed and started stomping around and was like, I don't even want that fucking deer and like just l- tried to leave. How odd, huh? It's just like yeah, yeah. You're doing it all for the wrong reasons, man. Like that's yeah. It's it's weird, Derek. I don't know how you feel because I don't I don't really pass judgment on guys like that. Like I mean, I've I've guided sheep hunters where like while I'm caping the ram, they're on the phone to change their flight to get out of a beautiful place. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so to me, I uh, I almost feel bad for them. Yeah. I don't really I don't really pass judgment of like this guy's a piece of shit. It's more like what is going on in this guy's priorities where this is primary importance and he can't enjoy the whole i mean dude, like my story think about that story if you had a positive attitude about it yeah like that's the best story he, ever he would have been that story that he i killed this giant bull yeah then a wild almost fire. got killed by a fire yeah. 
Like it, we had to leave our gear. It would, yeah, that's yeah, a great yeah. story. But instead, he bitched and moaned the whole yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. And I bet he was bitching and moaning because his kids were probably fucking miserable too. Yeah, you know? could have like been. They were there could have been like a. Dynamic. Those guys were probably bitching and moaning. Yeah, and he yeah, was yeah. Probably yeah. like these ungrateful little fuckers. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the funniest thing, dude, not to like bounce around stories, but as I was loading the bull up for him, one of the sons was like. Yep, Dad, this was great father son time. <laughs> like, you know, with like, Yeah, super sarcastic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I was like at the point of like, I for sure overtly laughed. Like, wow, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs>